Uh, this looks like it's working with like marginal revenue. Okay, so if a product's revenue function is given by three negative three Q squared plus 800 Q, find an expression for the marginal revenue, simplify it and record your result in the box. Make sure to use the proper variable, right? So we wanna make sure to use Q. So the marginal revenue is the derivative. So the marginal revenue uh, with respect to Q, that's a G, not a Q, with respect to Q should be the revenue function. Uh, and we take the derivative of that revenue function. Here we should be able to use the power law, so negative six uh, Q plus eight. So this expression here is what we want inside the box for the marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue, how does that work? It always gives us a kind of a general sense of like, if I add one more item, uh, it gives me a general sense of kind of what the, the uh, revenue is going to look like by adding one more item. Okay, let's take a look at this question and we'll circle back around to the convo. So the RC Heliot he Heliot Advertising Company finds that when its profits on day T of an advertising campaign is given by blah, where P is profit in dollars for day T. Okay, so that's our profit function. Find a simplified expression for the marginal profit function. So we just need to find the derivative of our profit function, which should be 2.5 times two, so negative five T plus 65. So there's the derivative of our profit function. That's our marginal profit. What is the exact rate of change of profits when 25 days have been passed in the campaign. So T is day of the campaign. And they're saying, what are the total profits on the day? Okay, so the, the rate of change is MP. So this here is gonna be our MP evaluated at 25, which should be negative five times 25 plus 65. Uh, where's my calculator? So five times 25 is one, so negative, negative 125. So negative 125 plus 65. So I think we're looking at negative 60 here. And then their total profits though are given by the profit function. So this is gonna be the profit function evaluated at 25, which is a little bit more complicated, right? This is our negative 2.525 squared plus 65 times 25 plus 37,000, sheesh. Mm, 37,000, right? 37,000 and then 65 times 25. Yep, and negative 2.5 times 25 squared. Okay, so it looks like we're at something like 37,062 dollars and 50 cents. So a simple item that is to be sold at a small specialty store has 200 in fixed costs and $8 per item in variable costs. So let's make the cost function since they've given us all of that information. So the cost function should be our variable costs per item plus the fixed costs. So here's our cost function. The owners assume that they can sell eight items if they charge $28 each and five items at a price of 55. So this is the demand function. They're trying to find the demand. So we can now talk about the slope of demand function. This should be our outputs versus our inputs. So the inputs have to be the number of items, right? And the outputs are gonna be the dollars. So they can sell eight items if they charge 28 and five items at a price of 55. So this should be our slope. And again, we're gonna assume that demand is linear here so that I, we're gonna get a quadratic kind of uh, revenue function. Okie dokie. So 28 
minus 55. And this, yeah, this should be a negative slope, so that makes sense to me. So, oh, that's negative nine. Oh, that's really, really sweet. Okay, so our, the slope of the demand function is negative nine. How do I get the demand function? So the demand function is really just a linear function. So I need something like y minus one of these y outputs is equal to the slope x minus the input of that output. And so this is going to be our demand function. We got this, chat. I think I feel like we got this. I feel like I know business enough to get the job done. So let's multiply the negative 9 through to get negative 9x plus 72. We'll move the 28 over. So we're looking at 72 plus 28, which is 9, which is 100. So our demand function in terms of x is negative 9x plus 100. Boom. How many units sold is the marginal profit negative $124 per item? Oh, God. Um, we need to get to the profit function. So if we have the cost function and the demand function, we can find the revenue function. So the revenue function is x times the demand. So we get negative 9x squared plus 100x. And our total profit should be revenues minus costs. So negative 9x squared plus 100x, that's our revenue. Our cost is 8x and 200. So we have to subtract both of those terms out here to uh, deal with the costs. So that means our profit function, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, profit function should be negative 9x squared, we'll have 100 take 8, so 92x minus 200. Okay, sweet, so there's our profit function. Let's go back and just take a quick peek at the question. So how many units is the marginal profit negative $124? So we know that the marginal profit is P prime, which is negative 18x plus 92. And we want that marginal profit to be negative 124. Okay, so negative 124 minus 92, so we get negative 216 is negative 18x. Can we divide both sides by negative 18? That comes out to be 12. Oh, sweet. Okay, a whole number. A whole number is always good in business applications. So I think, oh, it says your answer should be a whole number. Fantastic. So that's our whole number. It's 12. We should... Uh, uh, have 12 units will give us the uh, marginal profit that we're looking for. Damn, I can still do business applications. That's exciting. Okay, last question of the night. Maybe for this part it doesn't matter, but the marginal cost should just be two times, like we're just taking the derivative of this. So the marginal cost is 0 0.04. 42q plus 21.2. Yeah, so sorry, Jeff. No, 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 uh, no, probably no interesting big boy math questions until tomorrow. Oh, they want the marginal revenue function. How do I get that? How do I get the marginal revenue function? They're saying revenue was estimated at 68 per bale of cotton. So isn't the marginal revenue just 68? 68? <laughs> isn't it just 68? 
right? Because every additional bale gives me $68 roughly in revenue. I think that's what marginal revenue means, right? Oh, I guess because, like, if Levi comes back after, like, voting or whatever, he might have, like, other questions to talk about. So we might we might have, like, some political conversation after I'm back from dinner. Okay, that's what I thought. So the marginal revenue should be this. That makes sense. The marginal profit. So, yeah, I would say it's, like, if we answer questions, it'll be less math-focused uh, and maybe more political-focused, just because it is technically election day in Canada right now, uh, or election day in our province, I should be more specific. Uh, so marginal profit should equal the marginal revenue minus the marginal cost. So 68 take away 21.2. That's going to be 46.8. And then we need to subtract uh, 0 0.042q. So that should be our marginal profit. That makes sense. And then the marginal profit, what's all, what is this? What does it mean, Basil? The marginal profits for 557,000 units is blah. Okay, well that just means they want us to sub, is it Q in thousands? In thousands of dollars, wait, a quadratic model of cost in thousands of dollars. Q is in thousands, Q is in thousands. Okay, so we can just sub 500, 57 into our model, so 46.8 minus 0.042 times 557. And this should come out in hundreds of thousands. Is that how this works? C part E for units. Yeah, our output should be in, wait, cost is coming out to be in the thousands of dollars. So our marginal profit should also come up to be in thousands of dollars, right? But it's thousands of dollars per unit. So our answer is coming up to be 23.406. This is thousands of dollars. I believe it's thousands of dollars per unit uh, because this is a derivative, right? So the derivative is always something divided by something. And it's going to be profit divided by, by units effectively in this particular case. So I think it's going to be this one. We can double check. Think It just says, think about the units carefully. It doesn't give us the answer. <laughs> okay, but 23.406, I'm pretty sure it's thousands of dollars per unit.